friends hello from hot and sunny spain i've been asked to give an update and to share with you some of the ministry things that have been happening here in spain so i really do miss you guys and i hope you're doing well i will be reading some of what i'm going to share because i get a little nervous when i'm on video camera so i hope that's okay so some of you may remember that back in January, February 2020, I came to Spain through a mutual contact with a woman I was in Bible study with. She was supporting a missionary that had been in Russia and then ended up in Spain at a little school called Life International School in Tres Cantos, Spain. They were in desperate need of a supply teacher as one of their teachers had to go back to America to get a visa. So I just inquired. And what happened was, I'd love to tell you, and like, yes, I wanted to be a missionary to Spain my whole life. And not really. I mean, I could see myself being a missionary, but not necessarily to Spain. But what I did do was I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. And he said, are you... Are you just willing to go? And I said, yes. So I found myself in Spain for two months teaching grade one, two. Well, fast forward to last June, 2021, and I received an email blast from the director of the school, not just to me, but just to everyone saying they were in desperate need of a kindergarten teacher. Well, I heard that Holy Spirit's voice again, and it was more just, are you willing to inquire? Are you willing to just make a call and see what it's all about? So I made the call and then I heard this little voice say, oh, okay, I'll come. So that's really how I ended up here. I was just willing, the Lord opened the opportunity and I said, yes. So then it began the whirlwind of adventure, of getting a visa, of decluttering the house, renting the house, selling the car, getting insurance, all the things that had to come into place for me to land here in Spain on the Sunday before school started on the Tuesday. So I kind of look at it that I hit the ground running. Living in Spain really has been an adventure. There's been so many moments of wonder because Spain has so much history and so many different cultures and different types of food that are here. I find myself sometimes even wandering the streets of some of the back streets and thinking, I wonder how many other Canadians have ever had the privilege of walking these streets. And I think not too many. And that, that has been a blessing. It has been a blessing to come here. Now, when I first came, I only said I was planning to stay for a year. So learning Spanish was not a priority at that time. I was housed with a Dutch missionary family and it was about a 30 minute walk or a short bus ride to school. It turned out to be a challenge that was bigger than I imagined. Living in a foreign country and now confined to a very, very comfortable, but small bedroom. There was shared bathroom, kitchen privileges, but I was not allowed to use the dining room or the living room. So I really was living in a bedroom and I, found that really hard. So I knew that if I was going to stay, that I would have to find alternative accommodation. And that's what you see in the background here is my own little apartment, which I'll tell you about later. So Tres Cantos, where I volunteer teach, is basically considered a suburb of the main 
the main town of Madrid, which is the capital city of Spain. It took a while to realize the subconscious level of stress of navigating a place when you don't speak the language. And even from shopping at the grocery store to taking transit and the shadow of COVID and all the different changing regulations, just how much that um, is something you always had to plan for. You couldn't just be spontaneous always and go do things. So my position at Life International School was that of kindergarten teacher. While I have many years of experience as a teacher, I've never done English immersion and I've never taught three-year-olds, four-year-olds and five-year-olds. Now I did have a teaching colleague, but because of her other work schedule and schooling schedule, she, she left at two o'clock. So I was left with all of the children. So the three-year-olds, that was a bit of a challenge, but we grew to just love those children. And as the kindergarten teacher, I was so pleased to see how quickly the children were picking up English and that the older ones were even beginning to read a little bit. And it was so amazing to see them start picking up their first sight words and to see those pieces of language coming together for them. One thing I found very curious that what I was, I was told, I was just told because I don't speak Spanish to speak to the parents as much as I would like, is that many of the parents didn't realize that the school staff was self-supporting missionaries or missionaries that had to raise support. It was so wonderful and interesting to work with this caliber of person, especially young people, to see them giving their lives to come to be a missionary teacher and see the validity as a missionary teacher to the mission field and to see teaching as a calling and a valid endeavor. So for me, coming from public school education, it really did become a paradigm shift in thinking of how to teach from a Christian education point of view. Every day, it was a priority of our school to begin the day with prayer and to begin with the Bible story lesson, to try throughout the whole curriculum to infuse it with Christian values and the way that that the Bible would approach this subject. The staff met on Mondays and Wednesdays early morning to do devotions together and pray together. And a small group of very dedicated Christian parents met every morning to pray for the school and to pray for the staff and the students. You see, all of our students are not Christians. There are some, there are some missionary children who come, but the majority are not. And Life has become the Christian school in our community. Life is also, to our knowledge, the very first school in all of the history of Spain to be accredited with ACSI, which is the Association of Christian Schools International. So here again, what I've been told is that private schools, homeschooling, is not really a strong movement in schooling in Spain. I have found it fascinating to learn some of the history of Spain and the Christian history of Spain. And of course, Spain is not known traditionally of being a Christian country, it would be turned a Catholic country. But even that is on the decline. But we know God is always at work uh, my former landlords are missionaries working with the Alpha program, and they are seeing a real turn towards Christ in what I, I guess we'd call the charismatic Catholic branch of Catholicism. And they are so excited to see what God is doing with the traditional church. So I also found that one of the 
fascinating, and I don't know if I shared this before, but I go to the English church and they had their 60th anniversary back in the fall. And they shared a clip of a newspaper where they were, to their knowledge, the very, very first church, evangelical church, that was allowed in Spain to hang a sign in English on the wall of the church stating that they were an evangelical church. So while Spain has gone through different movements of Christianity, I just didn't realize with Ferdinand and Isabella, the Inquisitions, I didn't realize with the Civil War and Franco, just how devastated, even you know, from the Second World War on, how devastated the country was and what an impact that Catholicism had on the people of Spain. So as you know, Spain is now a very modern country with excellent health care, clean drinking water. I mean, my friend Susie and I were at Costco on Friday night. Who would have thought there's Costco in Madrid? So it is very, very multicultural. It's progressive. But underneath it all, it is a country that is crying out for God. I have asked several different people what they feel like is the overriding cry of, of what they know of just sort of the normal Spanish person. What would be the cry of their heart? And that they say people really struggle with fear and anxiety and trusting organizations like a Christian school or a church because of the history and because of the past. And that means that we have an immense job ahead of us to help bring the gospel to the Spanish children and specifically to the families that God has brought to us at Life International School. We want to so much to demonstrate for them a different way of living, a different way of approaching life where God is the center and that he can help them with every single thing in their life. So with that in mind, the school is moving forward and they have added this year, they've added uh, the basement addition to the school, renting that space and they've added grade eight to 10 or a secondary division with the goal of carrying those students all the way from pre-K to grade 12. For me, I will be teaching grade three or grade four next year. And the Lord has provided a very small, but beautiful, totally new renovated little apartment. It's in a, it's another city. It's, it does take about an hour on the bus realistically each way, but it's in a town called Alcobendas. So I'm in central Alcobendas. So for this year, I'm going to be an urbanite. Yes, I'm going to be a city girl for the year to experience what living in the city is like. So as you can tell, living in Spain has been an adventure, but it has also cost a lot more money than I had ever imagined because I've decided to stay another year and moving forward, maybe even another year. We'll just have to see how things go. So I've had to face the, ah, the emotional struggle and the strain that it is of, of raising support. Yeah, it's hard, Kespres family. It, it isn't easy to just say I, I need to raise some support. Spain is expensive. And the Canadian dollar is not very strong to the euro. They're just, they're just expenses. The rent, uh, bus pass, medical uh, insurance, housing insurance, even Spanish lessons. I've just started beginner lessons and that's 25 euro an hour with a qualified teacher. And I just, I just don't have that kind of money to do that more than one or two lessons. So if you see the value in the work here that we're doing in Spain and you see it as a valid missionary field, it would be wonderful if you would see to it to support the work that I'm doing here in Spain. I'm working with an organization called Resourcing Christian Educators, and they have a Canadian branch called the Great Commission. 
And that's who puts out the tax receipts and gives information about how the budget is then divided for their missionaries. I'd also really appreciate your prayers, but I feel it's kind of selfish for me to say, pray for me 24 seven. Oh, well, I'd love that. But realistically, maybe we could break it down. Maybe if you see a big black crow on the side of the road or on a telephone pole, that might, you know, strike your brain to say, oh, I need to just say a little prayer for Eleanor. Or maybe when you're eating tacos, you might think, oh, Eleanor, we can say a little prayer for Eleanor. Or maybe ah, when you're having that delicious cup of tea, you might think, oh, I just need to see a little prayer for Eleanor. And that would be so much appreciated. So I hope it's okay if we have time. Uh, lovely Becky from the church has on occasion mailed me some little beautiful care packages from home. She sent me this little book. And it just arrived yesterday, so I'm going to share with you the day one devotional, and I hope it blesses your heart as it has done mine. It's about taking the word all, and each one of the devotions has something about all and how God meets all of our needs. So it's 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. Missionary Amy Carmichael attended a meeting featuring the renowned preacher, Dr. Andrew Bonner. He was very old and could not speak very plainly or strongly, she recalled. The hall was full and I was near the back. I could not catch a single word he said except this word, all. He read for 2 Corinthians 9, 8, and he put every bit of strength he had into it so that the one word rang out, all, always, all, all. I have forgotten thousands of great sermons, but that all I have never forgotten, and it has helped me countless times. The context of this verse involves giving to the Lord's work, Yet the promise is larger than its context. The, word, the words God is able represent a reoccurring divine promise. This is for both of us. He is able to establish us, Romans 16, 25. He is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or think, Ephesians 3, 20. He is able to keep that which we have committed to him, 2 Timothy 1, 12. He is able to aid us in temptation, Hebrews 2, 18. He is able to keep us from falling, Jude 24. He is able to deliver us, Daniel 3, 17. And he is able to make all grace abound to us in all ways at all times for all things. Our God, he's able, he is able to work at life school, he's able to work in Kesprez, he's able to work through COVID, he is able to work through anything. He isn't just going to impart some grace or some sufficiency in some things for some good work. It's for all, all, all. And I'm going to pray for us before you go, before I go. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Kesprez and I thank you for their faithfulness and I thank you for the many kindnesses these people have displayed towards me over the years. And I thank you, Father, for the leadership of Kirk and Allison, that you would bless them and that you would bless these dear people with all the grace that you have. In Jesus' name, amen. I look forward to speaking with you again sometime. Take care, Kesprez family. Hasta luego.